think I do. Give me one sec. Do I have it? Yes, I do. All right. You, you want to come over to this one then, and I'll take over that one. Yeah. So that we're make sure we're using the same one. And as you guys, uh, Seeker, you have no difficulty walking to Lucius's because all the blades are still angled away from you going that direction. Lucius, you are very like coming down the center of the hallway. I mean, you don't normally think of, oh, I'm walking in, say, a five or six foot wide area as being difficult until it's lined on both sides with impossibly sharp objects. I'm thinking like a school, uh, like like a like a school hallway, except like instead of lockers, it's swords and shit. Right. Like, imagine walking across a six foot wide bridge with no railings across the Grand Canyon. Like... Intellectually, yeah. it's not dangerous or difficult, but if today's the day that you forget how to walk. <laughs> but you don't have to reduce your speed. doesn't require any separate checks or anything. And you manage to get all the way up to this position without any difficulty. It's just a little startling because you have to be aware of every step, and usually you're not. All right, so counterclockwise, right? I did it clockwise, so yeah, you try okay. it counterclockwise. so... Turning it counterclockwise in three, two, one, turn. And turning it counterclockwise, it only turns a quarter turn or so before it stops. And in so doing, the weapons retract back into the wall. Okay, that's Maybe. good. Where, uh, Brick, you said that like when I was going Lucius's way, they were angled... It was angled in such a way that it was fine. Did mm -hmm. that start at a certain point? Yeah, like, it started all the way back at the teleporter. Oh, okay, got it. It was just that I was going in the right direction. Correct. So you, yeah. like, the, the points are angled like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you're going with the grain instead of against the no, grain. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Alright, so my thought is we'll have to turn all of these all the way to expose whatever's in the walls to find that shit. Yeah. Um... I mean, there's a lot of options to turn these without actually standing here and getting impaled. Someone who's reasonably quick and can dip between the blades could do it, or, you know, we could have something... I don't know, I've, I've got some thoughts. What about everybody else? Again, I think tearing off the bandage... bandage... probably the, be the best course of action. Go and uh, wait. Nobody's wearing off. a bandage. You don't have a medicine kit. Out of character, who has the best deck save? <laughs> uh, Not plus two, plus zero, plus one here. How is it, Florian? <laughs> How? Because <laughs> you're never mind. Well, Florian's secretly our ace. Okay, Florian, I yeah. can uh, I can give you warring bond, so I take half the wounds you take. I can give you the magic ring I've been giving to Gus from time to time. Okay. Flor Flor like, oh boy, can you? Between these. Sorry, say that again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Alex pulls a pair of platinum rings out of his pouch. He puts one on Florian, puts one on himself, uh, speaks command word and taps them together, and now you have warding bond. Cool. What oh, you get that? You get plus one to your saves. <clears throat> What's everybody I'm else getting doing? the heck out of here. Yep. <laughs> and what am I doing? <laughs> are there... There are swords that, like, the entryway, right? Like, around the teleporter? Oh, there yep. sure are. Yeah. Yeah. Give Florian the, uh... Ascending Stone? Yep. Just in case. <laughs> and Florian, your goal is to turn all of the knobs clockwise while avoiding dying. If you find that you're trapped and can't wake your way out, call to us and we'll figure something out. Okay. <clears throat> what are Gus and Lucius doing? Any specific order? Whatever you think would be easiest to make your way Fo out afterwards. Follow your heart. <laughs> okay. Let's start with the hardest one first. So Lucius, well, hold up. Gus and Lucius yeah. are still in here? Yeah, sorry, I was talking to Simon, I apologize. I'm, gonna, I'm clearing out. Oh, well, you know what? I'm also going to go ahead and take an aid for you, uh, Seeker... And I'm gonna take one myself, so we all have eight more max HP. Eight, okay. All right, Florian, what's next? Florian, you hear an echo of Gus going, "We believe in you, Florian." 
<laughs> and he blinks. All right, I'm. Wait a minute. A minute ago, everybody was in the dangerous room, and Florian was on the outside enjoying sunshine. <laughs> Karma is, as this they is, say, this is only fair. This is this. <laughs> so anybody instant like karma do? just add a bitch. <laughs> All right, can help with this. Hold on. Okay, if I start bleeding profusely, we know Florian messed up. <laughs> uh, I am going to cast uh, Bless on myself. Sure. I'm going to use it using Florian's real name once no one is around. Okay. <laughs> Which is? Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah, I would. <laughs> I actually haven't thought of it. <laughs> we, we, can't go, we can't go any further until this happens. John Jacob Jingleheimer Schmidt. Of course. Because yeah. that's my name too. I don't know why it's not Florian. Yeah, he I would have thought it would be Florian. He said I could call him Florian. Yes. That is what he wants people to think his real name is. <laughs> so, we're going to take our break in a little while here. <laughs> if I don't have one by then, I'm going to Fantasy Name Generator. <laughs> Alright, that's fair. Okay. That is that is it's a threat. It's a threat. I will DM you the answer. Fair enough. Jonathan Chubb. <laughs> what? I don't know. Is he related to, turn... related to Caitlin Chubb? I'm going to stand in the middle and turn this crank clockwise. Okay. How far? Yeah, because you guys turned it counterclockwise, right? No, we turned it clockwise. You did? Alright, so counterclockwise. You can't. We go to turn oh. it counterclockwise, it doesn't move. Then counterclockwise. Uh, then clockwise. It is. How far? Uh, all the way. All the way. <laughs> Go ahead and make a dexterity saving. Throw, dexterity right? saving throw. All right. Yeah, plus one from the warding bond. Yeah. You're blessed. Um, and I am blessed. <laughs> oh no! That's a six. A six. Yeah. One point of damage Ow. as a spear shaft that you didn't notice down by your leg scrapes across just underneath your kneecap. And Did you just say ow, McDowell? <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, some sides of the dice have smaller numbers than other sides. <laughs> well, the numbers are the same size. Oh, we, statistically... both one... we both take one point of damage there, right? From the warding bond? He's resistant to that damage. Uh, well, we take one point of damage, and you're resistant. Mm -hmm. You, you cut... still take one point of damage. Yeah. Yeah, you can't... Yeah, yeah. Is that no, true? That's what I'm saying. I take one point of damage as well, so very <laughs> slight. You always round down in D&D. Half of one is 0.5 rounded down to zero. Oh, you say you round down? Right. Okay, so we don't take... Neither of us take any damage there. It's always round down. That's the rule, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember it, that. It's definitely oh. always round down, for sure. Yeah. Is the you rule on resistance that it's you have to take a minimum of one damage? You've made this ruling before against me, where I had to take a minimum of one. Oh, then I'm going to make it against you again. Now both of you have to take yeah. one. So we've doubled the amount of damage that did. Your is, trap. Is the strength of the party eroded? What is... <laughs> about to make that joke. What is Florian's passive perception? What does it feel like? Uh, nope, not that good. 14. 14. Florian. Looking back down the hallway behind you, the blades are jutting out a lot further than they were after Nodal made like a quarter turn or so, to the point where you'd have to very nimbly step along the center and be very, very careful. And it looks like they still have some room yet to come forward. However, this is not true of the giant double-sided axe blade coming out of the wall here. Instead of coming out with the blade facing the hallway, which is what you would expect, it's all it's coming out like perpendicular to the hallway. So you're not in any danger of cutting yourself on it, just as Axe Head is pushing itself out of the wall a little bit. So now these movement in these hallways are gonna count as difficult terrain. 
I'll uh, rub my leg in sympathy. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I think he's still all right. Yeah, can I still crank? Or has it gone all the way? No, you've turned it all the way clockwise. All right. So, going real slowly and deliberately. Okay. For this difficult terrain. Gonna... Make my way to safe two. How many? How much movement did it take for you to get there? Bill, did you move and dash? And twenty. Yes. Okay. Go ahead and make me another dexterity saving throw. Okay. That is significantly better. That is a seventeen. Okay, that four. is eight. No, it's more than that. Four points of slashing damage, which you can cut in half to two, okay. which you can split in half with Alex. Still only one point. Okay, that wasn't that bad. Okay, so now you're standing in front of the second safe, the one that Seeker had experimented with before. Clockwise, here we go. Keep going. Move it all the way? Yes. Yeah. And you move it all the way, and you hear the metallic groaning all around you. And now when you look back, the forest of knives and dagger points and spear points is much thicker. There's no longer any uh, safe central spot to walk. You're going to have to very carefully move swerving in and out or risk getting skewered. So it's still difficult terrain, but the DC on the deck save is now increased. And it looks like there's still more space for them to move out from the wall. Wow. Okay. Yeah, let's go gingerly. Okay. So those first few steps coming to this corner are relatively easy because all the blades are faced away from you. But as soon as mm -hmm. you step back out into this madness... It'll be more difficult. Yeah, I mean, I got HP. <laughs> for now. For now. <laughs> HP for hours. I am concerned about this third one, though, and I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> if only we had an arrow. <laughs> And you find yourself for the third knob. Let's uh, start cranking away. How far? All the way? Uh, do a quarter of the way. Okay. Quarter of the way, and you hear the metallic groaning all around you. Yeah. What does it look like the weapons are doing? They're just continuing to arc more and more out of the wall. You're pretty yeah. sure once you've completed this turn... Most of them will be pointed at me, completely at you, at maximum yeah. distance. All right, keep going, kind of clockwise, or er, clockwise. <laughs> Turning it clockwise, you turn it all the way. Metallic groaning comes to an end. And now, when you turn around and look back behind you, mm. uh, now it's going to be difficult terrain. And the deck save against is going to be a disadvantage. Okay. But I've cranked all three. You have. I have not seen Crystal Shard or anything here, but... Uh, sorry, refresh my memory. What was this thing doing here? This was a, a, like a double-bladed great axe head. So a, a, right. a great axe with a bladed edge on both sides. Uh, okay. Enormous, and instead of coming out of the wall in like a cleaving motion, the way the other axe heads are, it's coming out completely uh, parallel to the wall. Shit. Okay. <laughs> I'll use the sending sound, send a message that says, uh, I'll "Turn all three. Don't see a shard or anything. Really." Sharp and pointy, though. And it's see, as soon as he sees you getting a message, Seeker says, tell him to stay where he is. I have an idea. Stay where you are. Seeker has an idea. 
And suddenly the room just fills with Ricky Martin music. <laughs> All right, here's my thought, Alex. Uh, I don't know how bad it's going to be on the way in, mm -hmm. but did you notice how easy it was to move towards the exit when I was going past you, Lucius? Yeah. I think if we now go in, now that he's done the hard work of extending everything, I should be able to make my way all the way to the, that one that uh, you were at first and turn that and give him a little bit more wiggle room. Okay. Why do we think... I mean, I think now we have to look behind these to find the actual thing. Sure, but as long as we, we go in and we go with the grain of the, the weapons, we should be able to check just about everywhere before uh, we have I to start. Turn, I feel like as we turn the thing, the grain is going to become less and less of a thing. And fully extended, I assume they're sh jutting out in every direction. Seeker shrugs and says, we'll have to see when we get in there. And I'm going to teleport through. Okay, and you're immediately cut in half by the Vorpal Blades jutting out from the wall. Oh, no! No, it's exactly like you said. Moving the direction along with the grain, it's not going to be simple, but it's not going to require any checks. All right, and I'll quickly get out of the way and start heading down, just in case anyone is going to follow me. Okay. Well, I mean, if he impaled himself, <laughs> someone's got to heal him. No, Seeker did not impale himself. Okay. And as long right, as you're I moving think... with the grain of the weapons, you're not in I any think danger. Two of us should stay here. Uh, I'm wearing the ring to help Florian, so I'm gonna stay. I'm gonna volunteer myself because okay. I'm already taking potentially twice as many cuts. So I think one other person should go through to the other to the third location. How long well, do you wait? Well, you're still at the one opposite us, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Seeker will uh, say. Well, let me go through first, and we can see how, how easy it looks once I turn that that third switch, if I am able to find the, the crystal. I'm going to start and I'm just going to start for... searching the wall as I go make my way down. So yeah. where is this big, uh, big old axe? That... Yeah, Florian would have mentioned that. Way the, back uh, here, towards the, the end. end. Towards the, near the end save. Oh, well, then in that case, Seeker is confident enough in his own smugness that he would probably start searching a lot less carefully because he's like, oh, it's clearly there. How long can Lucius and Alex and Gus stand there without blinking? Eventually, Lucius would... I mean, I'm just going to blink and then I'll blink again intentionally as soon as I do. <laughs> the answer is forever because they are fictional characters. Yeah, it's probably uh, a constitution score. And then immediately puts his hand back on the statue and blinks intentionally. Which is Oh, you know what? I'm gonna, I know what I'm going to do. Uh, the second time that happens, I'm going to keep my eyes closed once I go through. <laughs> Smart ass. I'm just just going to stay here. Somebody has had to make an SCP-753 staff walk, I'm sure, for 5e. Seeker, coming around this way, you see... I think it's 173. Is it 173? Whatever. Uh, this great axe blade has emerged from the wall around the back of it. So, like, behind the great axe, right? Uh -huh. You see a fourth safe with another knob. The knob is almost flush with the wall. But because the other three knobs have been completely rotated, this one is currently accessible. All right. And I'm going to uh, call out, there's another safe over here. You might want to take cover. I'll uh, open my eyes and then close them again. Uh, Gus is going to go like... like... Are you sure this is a good idea? I'm sure that it's an idea. <laughs> like, Who is Anne forget. and why does she have the worst ideas? <laughs> don't forget we have somebody who can cast Mage Hand. And then Gus blinks and disappears. <laughs> you know, I remembered I had Mage Hand like halfway through and I was just like, no, I'm pod committed to this. <laughs> <laughs> Seeker, what do? I'm going to turn the uh, safe. Two things happen. You turn the knob of the safe. The first thing is the knob actually loosens and comes out, revealing a small cavity inside where you see a diamond-shaped glass chip. Okay. I'll grab it for now. The second thing that happens is you hear a clatter behind you. And when you look back, you see the knob in this far wall has also come completely out. Well, I hate to hear it. The knob in the wall in front of you pops out from the wall and lands at your feet. 
Florian picks it up, mm -hmm. puts it back in. <laughs> Make a constitution saving throw. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you get more fun than this. You're blessed. Ooh, that's good damage. Oh, come on! It was on 18! <laughs> uh, that is a... Plus one from the wing is 11. Okay, 13 points of lightning damage. As you hold the knob up, and as soon as you make the connection, sparks arc out of the wall, into the knob, and into your hand, and down your arm, and up your face. Makes your hair stand on end. Uh, Alex, you get some of this too, don't you? Yeah, no, we, he resists all damage, and I take damage equals the amount he takes from okay. that effect. So it's 13 damage. Which you're going to cut in half to six. Okay. <laughs> We're standing there and Alex just seizes <laughs> up. <laughs> Alex, that's exactly what happened. You just feel your muscles. <laughs> oh, that was electricity. That's not good. Oh, hell. So suffice right. it to say, putting the knob back into place did not work. Yeah, no. Fuck that. I'll point back through and say everything all right in there. Uh, it's a bit tight. We're going to have to make our way back out. Uh, I have a really good idea, and I hope Florian does too. I just electrocuted myself. Florian's idea is steam low quality. <laughs> Florian, you did more than that. You electrocuted yourself and Alex. <laughs> I electrocuted two people. There you go, buddy. <laughs> What's next? Uh, Seeker summons his familiar in the exact center of this floor, lying down on the ground. Okay. And then he looks through its eyes and Misty steps there. Okay. That's a really good idea. And then he idea. dismisses it again and waves bye to Florian. Florian, let us know how it goes. <laughs> and he does the same thing again over here. Okay. <laughs> Florian. Clever. Clever. No. Low quality, man. <laughs> I don't have anything cute like that. Not gonna lie, that was kind of an ass kind of a churlish thing of Oh wait! To do. Actually I have an idea. <laughs> okay. Hi. What's up? Uh Florian, stay where you are. So, Florian, you moved that far? Yeah. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw at disadvantage. Too late. Uh, disadvantage is 12. Okay. So you're carefully making your way between these blades, but you can't be aware of all of your huge gangly limbs all at once. And here and there, you gangly. catch a blade... On the back of your hand in one place and against your leg on another. And all told, eight points of damage. Slashing damage. Ooh. Half of which goes to Alex. That and Seeker says, way right there, Florian. I'm coming. Uh, push my way through the grain. Okay. And then give me, uh, Nodal, one sec to um, check something real quick. What are you doing? I am going to uh, polymorph Florian into a tiny creature. <laughs> uh, let's go with a uh I don't know. A... Not even let Florian pick, huh? You're not gonna. No, this is Florian. You got a, you got any ideas? No, I want you to pick. <laughs> polymorph him okay. into a tressum. No, Boom. yeah, I'm gonna try uh, polymorph him into a tressum. <laughs> uh, Florian, do you want to make the wisdom saving throw? Can I just let it happen? You can. You can <laughs> voluntarily fail to save. Yeah, I voluntarily fail. <laughs> and you will polymorph into a flying cat. I don't recommend flying, but you should be able to crawl your way out. You're, uh, so normally the downside of polymorph is that you get the intelligence score of whatever creature you got polymorphed into. Good news, 
uh, intelligence score of Atresum is 11. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Florian will cl crawl as a Tressum. And as a tiny creature, it's no difficulty at all. Staying close to the floor. And then I'm going to use my Misty Step trick one last time to get back to the entrance. And then he's going to drop Polymorph and Florian is 20 feet away from the teleporter. <laughs> Alright, let me save this map. Actually, I should note who has... Uh, before you note it, I was gonna, about to hand it off to someone. Does someone want to take it? I only have one. I have I'll, I'll give it to Alex one. then. Okay. He said he only had one and you can't talk. Mm. You gonna, is he going to be a Tressum for the full hour? Is, is, that, is that what we're doing? I, I'll pet him for a bit and see how he seems like he appreciates it. <laughs> <laughs> What's next? Only the biggest of oofs. Uh, How does Florian take the bean pet? Fine. I'll keep doing it then. Does he purr? <laughs> Purring Maybe is I'm involuntary. I don't, I don't, okay, there it is. Uh... I overstimulate him and he scratches me. <laughs> I know cats. Oh no. Oh no! I just realized Florian is now Seeker's Timeshare Cat. <laughs> Timeshare Florian? <laughs> Who's a good uh, Furian? <laughs> Furian? <laughs> Ooh. That's so, rough. <laughs> so, I, so I'm gonna go lay down on my couch face down and stop existing now. Why? Um, I think it's hilarious. Uh, and <laughs> Seeker bends down real close so that the others can't hear him and whispers into him, Yo, just grab onto my arm if you want me to change you back. <laughs> um, I'm going to go and burn a healing spell on myself. How, you, how do you look, Florian? He looks like a cat. <laughs> he looks like a I'm sure I cat. All of our so. Uh -huh. <laughs> he looks right. perfectly healthy. I'll, uh, I'll send the uh, badger through the now we got two cats and a badger. Send the badger through, and six seconds later, I'll follow. All right. One sec. I got to do something. Oh, no. Never mind. It would have been pointless anyway. So good timing. I think everything you do is pointless. There we go. Anything everyone does is pointless. <laughs> the universe is entropy. I love it. So what, what was this one? What was the word on this one? Swamp. Oh, I hate it. Okay. Scrappy. Yeah. Stepping off of the circle in the center here. Mm -hmm. The floor looks like the same tiles as before. But they don't feel that way. When he steps off the tile, his foot begins sinking down into it. As though it's very thin. Thick, viscous muck. Mm -hmm. And as you guys come through, I mean, you, first of all, you see Scrappy standing there with his paws kind of half submerged into the floor. The smell of just bog stench, mold, decay is very, very thick here. But visually, it looks identical to most of the other dungeons that you've come through. I'll, uh, I'll scrap you back, and I'll climb on top of So, my okay. thought is, fly is the easy way to fix this problem. How do they counteract it? Uh, the when we've come up with clever ideas in the past, we haven't been punished for it. Hey, Florian, you want to go take a look? <laughs> Florian, does, does a Tressum meow? Yeah. They're a house cat. Florian meows. Also, where is my tile? On top uh, of it's on top of me. You are very oh, tiny. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll uh, I'll fish out the continual flame coin and hand it to Florian. Do Tressums have dark vision? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so you guys are just standing there teleporting back and forth. Uh -huh. No, Florian is gonna go investigate. 
down this way. Alex will blink out once, and then the second time, he'll just close his eyes once he comes back. And Inside. as soon as, like, Florian disappears around the corner, Seeker goes, I, I can't talk to Florian, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, you can. Well, I can, but only, like, simple ideas. <laughs> like... I'm gonna cast Fly, and I'm gonna hover above this. Okay. Gus is gonna, like, just kind of call you, gonna sigh, go show off, and he's gonna blink out of here. I was experimenting. Mm. And I'm gonna blink back. Do I actually? I'm, I'm I'm gonna blink while hovering over the circle. Does that cause me to blink back and forth? No. Okay. Good to know. I walk. Well, yeah, you got the top of Scrappy anyway, so I guess I don't have to keep my eyes closed. <laughs> so yeah, Florian, you see the what I've revealed for you. I'm just gonna stand here until I start to sink, and then I'm gonna just I'm gonna fly over here. I need to teach us raries. Rories. Lucia's coming the other direction. Continuing to hover over the uh, the surface of the of the muck tile? Question mark. That actually is a good question. I'm going to bend down and I'm going to put my hand onto the tile to the south here and kind mm -hmm. of scoop, try to scoop some of it out. Your hand goes down into it and it feels just like very thick, viscous muck, but you can't actually grab hold of it and pull it out. Does anybody have a cup? Sure. I'm going to take a cup and stick the cup down and underneath it and then try to pull the cup out. The same thing happens, but there's a pretty strong suctioning when you pull the cup out. It's difficult. It takes some takes some upper arm strength to wrench it free, but the cup is empty. Oh. So it's got a it's a, just like slightly permeable. So it looks like there's a chamber pole in the center? Correct. Okay. I think it's like a non Newtonian fluid. Who's Newton? No, no, no. J.K. Uh, Newtonian was a gnome. <laughs> yeah, stupid. I think he invented the catapult spell. <laughs> there's a, uh, there's a, ch there's a chamber up there. It looks like it dead ends at both of these directions, to the south and to the east here. Did you see anything <clears throat> in the chamber? I didn't get a good. Let me. Let me... No, uh, just, just, a, just walls and a walls and a pole in the center. The pole it looks like it's made out of the same material as the tiles of the walls. You've seen similar poles before. Ah, similar poles. Gotcha. I'm go over here where Florian is. Okay. Uh, the difference is Florian can't actually hover in place like you can. Florian has to stay in motion or he falls. Hold up my arm for Glory to land on. <laughs> um. Scratch the shit out of it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, Florian hovers. Florian, Florian can't hover. Can't. Oh, he can. Then yeah. Let's take the arm. Talents. Ow. <laughs> All right, well, then if you're not seeing anything, given what we're looking for, I think the clever thing to stop us from flying is we're looking for something underneath the surface. That tracks, yeah. But that doesn't mean flying is useless, because flying just moves you through space. Like, you're yeah. the most likely of any of us to be able to pull yourself out of this suction. Mm -hmm. Well, the spell only lasts for ten minutes, and I'm, I've got another one, but that's it. I mean, we could also just levitate everybody. Is that a spell you can target more than one person? If you up so to it? be clear, fly doesn't do anything but give you a fly speed. What what does a fly means you can fly? What does a fly speed mean? It means you can fly. <clears throat> Moving through muck or some other kind of medium is not flight. Okay, so that's that's where I was coming off. I mean, do we think it's down in the floor somewhere? Uh, I don't think that it is because it's been, it's, 
that seems counter to what we've experienced so far. All right. Well, let's let's do the obvious thing first. Um, here, take my uh, shards, and I'll do a locate object in here and see if I can at least find where the thing is. Okay. Fair enough. I'll take uh, seek your shards and head back to the portal. I'm gonna pass mine to uh, to Alexander as well. Yep. I'm just gonna blink away. Okay. I'm gonna stay in here with. And with there's some that are merged into Florian's form, so have fun with that. Okay. And yeah, as soon as they leave, I'll cast Locate Object looking for one of those shards. I guess technically the closest one is the one that's merged into Florian's form. Uh, you locate one underneath you. Fairly far underneath you. 50, 60 feet perhaps. And slightly to your southeast. Okay. Uh, am I able to kind of like pinpoint which of these tiles it would be under? Wouldn't be under a tile. Southeast is. Okay, so it would be like somewhere over here, or over here, or over here, like over here, go. yeah. But further down than southeast. Yeah. Hmm. Then it's possible we need to do something in order to bring it back up. I'll blink through and just give them that information in case someone can come up with an idea, and then I'll bring myself back over here okay is there a button hidden i'll i'll blink back uh button along the walls maybe and blink away <laughs> it's the most obnoxious conversation ever <laughs> i'm just working with what i was given brick Road. you know what i, I mean I'm, I'm thinking of like the, the laughing door skits people just pop out Scrappy doesn't need to breathe, but he'd be a huge pain in the ass to pull back up out of this with ropes if we needed to. If Gus pops in, like, how difficult would it be to replace Scrappy? And then we just, he blinks out. <laughs> uh, Alex will kind of stand there with his hand on his hip, waiting for him to come back so he can respond. <laughs> it doesn't do any good if I can replace Scrappy if he has the disc on him. <laughs> So, to clarify, Gus's plan was send Scrappy to his death, make a new Scrappy, and let's not worry about retrieving the chip. They had a good start, but the middle and end game could use some work. Uh, yeah. Huh. I'm a fighter, I fight things, and he blinks away. <laughs> well, there was that other room where once we circled the, the gates... Uh, it opened up a, a path. Maybe we have to push through a certain amount of this swamp, and we'll start feeling that. Do we have move? a water breathing, or that would that even work? Floor breathing? Floor breathing? This doesn't feel like water to me, and I have the spell, but I don't know that it would make any service because that's a ritual, right? Yeah. Why don't we let, well, let's let's take a step outside and let's see if it works. And I wait here and I say, Lucius, aren't you going to lose your fly if we do that? Yeah, but, you know, it is what it is. Alright, All right, yeah, let's get water breathing going then. Okay. We can at least see if it works, and I'll be the one to test it, because worst case scenario, I'll leave my familiar above ground, and if I start choking, I'll zap myself back up. Can you do that if your feet, your lungs are filled with floor? Doesn't require a command word? That's an excellent question. Ten minutes. That I didn't think entirely through. As Lucius takes out his uh, his grimoire and starts talking in uh, just... creepy infernalness. I'm just going to tie a rope around you. No offense. I'm going to go with the simple solution. One rope, no. rope, one round around you, one round around Scrappy. No, I mean that sounds like a good plan to me. And who's being granted water breathing? All of us. Uh, okay. 10 million creatures, so all of us. Okay. What's next? Link back through. Uh, tie one end of a rope around Scrappy, who I'm st sitting on the saddle of, and the other end around Seeker. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm just taking a moment to uh, take stock of what I'm going to be able to cast without being able to breathe. By which I mean, I'm checking which of my spells don't have verbal command. <laughs> Does Misty Step have a verbal component? 
Uh, yeah, everything that I have has a verbal component, except um, something that will actually be kind of useful in this situation. Which is, uh, I'm going to go down, um, I'm going to make a loud noise, I'm using a uh, minor illusion, doesn't require a verbal component. Um, if I, uh, if I make that noise, start pulling me back up. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I was thinking you just put your head in the floor and see if you can breathe, but... Well, yeah, but I don't see any reason to pull myself back if I can. I enjoyed that sentence. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm going to start um, pushing my way this way, I think. So the first step that you take out, the floor grabs at your boots, and it becomes par fairly... Uh, obvious fairly quickly that every step is going to require some strength. Uh, like picture the amount of effort it would take to walk through like waist high snow. All right. And you're yeah, a gnome, I... so after a few steps, uh, it's not a gradient going. It's not a grade going down from teleporter. Mm -hmm. It's actually a stairwell. And there's like two or three steps down. As a gnome, your head will be <clears throat> under the floor after four or five steps heading off to the north. Okay. After four or five steps, I'm going to see if water breathing works. It does. Link. Okay, cool. But moving is very, very slow. You find yourself using your arms almost as much as your legs. And if you step away yeah. from the wall, it also becomes very disorienting. And above the uh, thing comes the sound of a correct bell. <laughs> da -ding! That's a very smug bell. I don't know why. <laughs> I hate it. It's the worst bell. All right. Sounds like you can breathe down there. Uh, so go. Here. Uh, I'm going to go in the direction that he said the thing was. Okay. I'm going to put my hand against the wall and just follow it. So, who else is going where? Let's let's establish that first. I'm going to go down with... I'm going to follow where the direction Seeker... Or, yeah, Seeker He's got a rope, so you can just grab onto that and follow it. He's got yeah. how much rope? Uh, how much rope do we have? I have 50, so if someone yeah. else has another... It's 50, a 50 probably rope less. tied between Scrappy, who has an order not to close the shutters, and Seeker. And well, I would have said I would rather have 100 feet if someone has two ropes. I've got another 50 feet you can okay. tie. So, yeah. he's got 100 feet of rope. Where does Gus go? Uh, Gus stands right here in case he needs to yank on a rope. Okay, so he's just blinking back and forth? Right. And we're uh, Stand on Scrappy and you don't have to blink. I'm way probably as much as Scrappy does. That's nowhere near true. <laughs> that can't possibly <laughs> be true. Where's Florian going? <laughs> Florian is staying far away from the Splunkers. Okay. So... So you guys going to the north, uh, you step down a few steps to the point where the floor is up above uh, Seeker's head, but not quite that high on Lucius. Lucius, it never comes above, like, high up on your chest. And the stairs stop to the point where now you're just trudging forward through this. Alex, if you go about that far, if you take another step in that direction, the floor will be up above you as well. Can I see? I'm gonna... Okay, seeing that Lucius is tall enough not to end up with his head under the stuff, I'll just come back. Okay. What, do you want me to go? Uh, let's let them find what they have. I mean, I'm just worried about a sudden pitfall, because without a rope, I don't have a way to come back up. Oh. If I'll you want to go, by all means, but... Okay, so where are we going up here with Seeker and Lucius? I'm just running my hand along the wall to see if I can find anything. Okay. So, Seeker, you're effectively blind. Mm hmm Lucius, you can still see. Yeah, I'll, I'll tap his shoulder when he gets close to the corner. And I'll keep my hand trailing along the wall, but I'll nod. Okay. Not that he can see it. <laughs> Roll initiative. Oops. They changed the way spawning in components work, and I always screw it up every single time now. Oh, 
I don't want that. No. Don't put that evil on me. Oh, what's happening, buddy? Uh, this is initiative. Everybody set? Uh, I am as soon as I do this. Yep. Alex is surprised. Yep. Scrappy can't be surprised, but he's just going to dodge. Okay. Florian is surprised. Seeker is surprised. I am incapable of being surprised. Okay, so what do you do? Uh, what... What seems like it's going on? Nothing. Alright, then I'm just going to keep going along the wall. Okay. I think that's as far as I can get with difficult terrain. Moving... No, right here. Okay. How is this worded? So when you move to this position into the corner... Yep. Take eight points of acid damage. All right. As moving along, you've got your left hand tracing along the wall, and your right hand kind of out in front of you, and your whole arm impacts something far more solid than the rest of this viscous-feeling muck. And it burns badly. All right. And uh, at that point, then, and rather than using dash, uh, everyone above ground suddenly hears... <laughs> Which is exactly the same sound as the toilet flushing back on your boat makes. Uh huh. You get a nice Metal Gear Solid alert noise. Wait, you, wait. That was the Metal Gear Solid alert noise. It. That's all it does. Is it goes. Bleh! Well, that, like, was a, that was a different noise, and also not the Metal Gear Solid alert noise. Well, that's why I put it in Discord. Okay. <laughs> I briefly considered turning on my mic spam in order to do it, but I didn't have it set up. I think if I played Metal Gear Solid and a guard saw me and it went bloop, I'd be like, nope, turning this off. <laughs> So what do you do? Is it, does it take uh, well, your that, was my act, that was my action. Okay. Was I, uh, I cast Minor Illusion to let everyone know something fucked is going on. Terrible. All right, now I'm going to attack you. It's as loud as a lion can roar. Really unpleasant. <laughs> oh, they also don't have advantage against me, even though I can't see them. Why? That's part of alert. Uh, so I've got a... 14 to hit. Uh, no, because I have mage armor up. And you just feel movement around you, like the muck itself is moving. And for a moment, that solid mass in front of you shuffles out of the way. And that's going to bring us to Gus. You heard... What was that noise? I guess I'm going to... Wade... <laughs> So that's uh, 10, 20, 30. Count it as difficult yeah. terrain. Is your yeah, that's what I said, 10, 20, yeah. 30. So I can see Lucius, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm going to... Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. You're surprised. You're not doing nothing. Oh, yeah. You're right. I thought uh, we were past that. And Lucius is surprised. That brings us back to Alex. Alex, you're the first one who's not surprised who heard the... Bloop. They are coming out with that PC collection, so I'm just going to go ahead and mod the game so it makes that sound. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> YW. <laughs> Alex, you're up. I don't know how to make it better. It's, it's oh, there we go. Um, so I'm going to ready an action. I'm going to pull my gun off my shoulder and shoot the first thing that I see, see attacking one of my companions. Scrappy is going to make an athletics check to reel this rope back in at my command. Okay. So that's a three, and then he's got 26. 26. So the rope would go taut on this corner here. Yep. In the muck. Can he pull uh, 
sneak her back around these corners? That's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking probably not, considering that the muck is holding the rope flush against the wall around this corner. I think it's more likely if you pull with that amount of strength, you'll end up breaking the rope first. Uh, I believe that's the end of Scrappy's turn, then, if you can't. I mean, the rope will snap in that case. Like, Scra I'm not telling him to hold back. Right. Okay. So, yeah, he feels the rope starting to reel back in. Uh, that's going to bring us to Florian. You ready? You ready for this? Mm-hmm. I've been waiting to do this since the battle started. Oh, my God. <laughs> Florian grins himself. <laughs> Florian's like I don't know when I'm going to have another chance to lick my own scrotum <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it while it lasts to be clear you have an intelligence of 11 <laughs> so this is Florian making these choices well yeah have you ever met Florian who among yeah. us given the choice <laughs> Seeker, you're up. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm going to use an action to switch to my familiar's eyes. Okay. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to Misty Step. Okay, and you do that. And I'm going to... And you have about 20 feet of rope still attached to you. And I look down, I say, nice, nice work. So you show up with acid burns and shit. Yeah. Lucius. Oh yeah, it's a real mess. Who is not blind? Can I just say there's some acid down there? Wait, alert nullify his advantage from being blind? Yeah. Uh, I have it up actually because I checked just checked it. Lucius. You gain a plus five to initiative. Oh, sorry. I have a twenty-two to hit you. That will hit. This is going to hurt a lot more. Alert's good. It's going to be 7 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. 15 points of acid damage. Ow. Are you wearing armor? Yeah. The armor is partially dissolved and provides one fewer uh, point of armor class. So. That really sucks. Does that reduce the bonus you get from that armor to zero? It does. Then the armor is effectively destroyed. Actually, no. It, it uh, no. It don't. It, it has plus two armor AC. Okay. Then it is a minus Never one, mind. whatever kind of armor it is. Okay. As something is slurping around and slithering around and moving, like the muck is more solid all around you than it was a moment ago. And you feel a crash up against the back of your leg and your buttock and up onto your spine. Something, a powerful blow that strikes you there. And it kind of rings your bell for a second. And the impact with it burns in the points where it touches your flesh quite painfully. That's going to bring us to Gus. Uh... I mean, blink away. <laughs> I'm going to move here. Okay. I'm going to just kind of trudge my way through here. And uh, I can I see what's – can I see anything attacking Lucius? Or is it just like he's like having a bad time? In you the, see him in the reeling from the blow. Okay. I'm going to tell Lucius to, let's see, I can't really do anything here, so, uh, you know what, I'm going to, can I attack the, the ground that Lucius is submerged in without hitting Lucius with a firebolt? What square? The square Lucius is standing in without hitting Lucius. I'm not trying to hit Lucius himself. I'm trying to hit, like, the square he's in. So, I think Firebolt has to be aimed at a creature or an object. 
So you can't just fire it at like empty space. If you presume there is a creature there, yeah, I will allow you to fire it, but you have to show me what square. If you pick Lucius's square, then the creature you're trying to fire at is Lucius. Because effectively, oh. even if there is another creature in this spare in this square, if you miss it or if you're wrong, you're just going to going to hit Lucius with it because you're attacking his square. Also, I don't like that it's firebolt because <laughs> I only have my it's left. Yeah, I'm not gonna shoot at Lucius. Okay. I'm just going to You can shoot at another square around Lucius where you suspect a monster might be. You just have to tell me what square. If you can pick I Lucius see... a square and you're wrong, it will hit Lucius. Fine, I'm gonna shoot at this square. Okay. So we'll see. Yeah, let's see. Since they were coming from this way, and uh, it's perfectly sound reasoning. So, all right. Oh. Oh, that was almost a 19, but it is not. That is a eight to hit. Eight will hit. Oh. It has okay. an armor class of floor. <laughs> it's actually the final boss of Ultima Exodus. That's not a joke. Uh, that's literally the floor is the final boss. It's messed up. That's a. It's eleven points of fire damage to the floor. To the floor. Yeah. Floor not to the. Monster. Not to the Florian. No, he's Furian at the moment. So you fire a fireball, and from your perspective, it just looks like it vanishes into the tile next to Lucius. Lucius, you feel a tremendous shuddering around you as this mass most of what you're feeling is this mass the impact of it sending ripples through it and its movement is causing vacuums down in the muck to fill up and slap against your body in strange ways so you can tell the thing has definitely been hit but gus has no idea mm -hmm. gus is that the end uh i'm going to Yeah, that's the end. Okay. That's going to bring us to Lucius. Uh, I need this whatever it is to make a constitution saving throw, please. As sure thing, just shout, shouts out a single word in Inferno. It's going to be a 15. That, uh, DC is... Yeah, my DC. DC was 16, so you're going to take 3d10 thunder damage, and Lucius is going to be there now. Okay, how much? 3d10, I'm rolling that right. Yeah, like, roll it, though. Don't just tell me 3d10. Like, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm getting there. Because <laughs> I'm casting Thunderstep. I am casting Thunderstep. And that is a total of 16 Thunder damage. That's a way cooler spell than Misty Step. <laughs> like, way yeah, cooler. Yeah, but I would have owned Lucius. <laughs> yes, and? And then 10, 20, 30 gets me there. Okay. And as you get this close to the circle, you're stepping back up the stairs, up and out of the muck. And like I say, it takes some uh, some actual effort to pull your limbs and your torso loose. The good news is there's not actual muck stuck to your body and clothes as you pull yourself up and out. So you can see all the, you can see my armor and tatters and, and just disgusting bruising all over his arms and legs. Is anybody else going to pursue this information, or do you want to come back off initiative for now? Oh, I'm definitely going to shoot that space. Yeah, me too. Okay, that's going to then that is the end of Lucius, and that's going to bring us to Alexander. Alex will ready an action to heal Lucius when he's adjacent to him, and then order Scrappy to uh, get going. <laughs> All right, so triggered action goes off there. Lucius, go ahead and get back. 13 hit points. Thank and you. Alex, Scrappy Rock flies by and Alex uh, throws a salve over some of your wounds. He goes 5, 10, 15, 20. And his bruising is no longer purple and ugly. At, uh, what do I see once I arrive here? Nothing. All right, and I'll order Scrappy to dodge with his action then. Okay. It's going to bring us to... I mean, we know what Florian's doing. Yes, but... I do. I do get the sense that he really wants to say it. Florian Grimblin's out. Roll a constitution saving throw. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 
five. You get the worst hairball and you start hacking it. And it's <laughs> one of the worst experiences you've ever had in your life. <laughs> Seeker, you're up. I am going to. One of your cats I'm... is choking. What? One of your cats is choking. <laughs> yeah, I not the cat that I love the most at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna climb Gus and put myself on him. Gus, are you allowing this? Yes. Okay. I guess we, do we need to get like stirrups installed in the side of my armor going forward? I'm gonna go uh, onto his shoulders and I'm gonna cast. Uh, Ray of Frost at that spot. Okay, go ahead and make that whatever it is. I would love to make that whatever it is. Ranged spell attack. I'll make it at disadvantage because you can't see your target. Uh huh. And you are picking that square? Yes. Okay. Because that's where I was attacked. Gotcha. Uh. And it is a 19 to hit. 19 will hit. Four. That's 10 cold damage. Okay. And its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next. So from your perspective, you cast the Ray of Frost, and it's very interesting to watch, because usually you'd watch it like skit along the floor and you get a coating of frost, but that doesn't happen. The actual spell just disappears as though the floor is not there, out of sight. Moving or staying put? Staying put. It's gonna bring us to Gus. Uh, well, Gus is going to just move over five feet. Okay. And he is going to, hmm, if I were a horrible floor monster. <laughs> How do you know you're not? <laughs> oh man. How do any of us know we're not? I'm a soulless and homunculus. <laughs> right. Well, if this thing shows up and it's a hand and it's a, like a Zelda floor master, I'm going to have words with you, Brick Road. What words? But, uh, like, how dare you, mostly. Uh, well, it, touched, to it did touch Seeker and then Seeker reappeared <laughs> back at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing happened to Lucius, come to think of it. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to attack. Let's see. I'm going to attack th this square. Okay. With a fire bolt. Okay. Go ahead and roll to hit. Roll at disadvantage because you cannot see your target. That's a seven. Okay, and you see your firebolt disappear into the floor. Okay. Fireboy. And I guess that's my turn since I've got a gnome on my shoulder. Correct. I got this monkey on my back. It's like a walk in your pocket. It's gonna bring us to Lucius. Ten and twenty gets me there. Um I'm gonna fire at the spot where I was standing before I electro zapped or thunder zapped fire what um eldritch blast okay, go ahead and roll a disadvantage because you cannot see your target okay that's a I can't math that's a 15 to hit 15 hits Been a while since I've actually rolled damage on something. Yeah, I forget how much damage it opened last. Uh, that's ten uh, force damage. And your eldritch blast snakes forward and it disappears into the floor. And then I'm going to use my second fire shot of the eldritch blast to hit that square. Okay. That's uh, an 8 to hit. I'm sorry, 10 to hit. 10 hits. Uh, 
Uh, six force damage. And your Eldritch Blast snakes into the floor and disappears. Ten foot movement, less ten foot of movement gets me there. Okay. Let's go ahead and take our break here. When we come back, we will start at the top of the order on this ridiculous combat.